Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson. This is BA121. We are now on Chapter 9, The Approach, uh, The Power of Connecting. You must connect with people in the business world, with their clients, with their customers, uh, with their internal customers, external customers as well. In the video right along, those are also very important to make sure that you watch those videos. Great interactive way to learn. Uh, the video first 15 seconds features Tanya Murphy, general sales manager at radio station WBEN-FM. Uh, she discusses the importance of the first few seconds of a client meeting, uh, which are crucial in terms of building your first impression and helping the client uh, make a quick decision. Uh, you know, so first impressions always are, are hard to change, but that first 15 seconds is very, very crucial. Uh, video right along discussion questions, always great as well as a supplement to watching the video. Then you ask yourself these questions or uh, if you work in tandem, uh, ask someone else in the class. Uh, analyze the importance of making a good first impression during a sales approach. Obviously, uh, if you don't make a good first impression, highly unlikely you'll make the sale. Uh, list the do's and don'ts, uh, do's and do nots of uh, making a good first impression. As always, we have our chapter objectives. Uh, understand the role of first impressions and the importance of a strong approach. Understand how to make contact with your prospect. Describe the different types of sales approaches. Identify how to overcome barriers to success uh, in getting an appointment. Right, Setting that appointment is sometimes the hardest thing to do. And uh, learn how to prepare an elevator pitch for your brand. Very, very important. Uh, may even want to look up uh, a Harvard uh, Business School's uh, elevator pitch. pitch. Uh, they have like a thing where you can put in your information and, and assist you uh, in doing so. Uh, first things first, first impressions are formed quickly, difficult to change, and can have a lasting effect. It's very hard to uh, to take or erase that image from your mind if during our first impression uh, you went to come talk to me and I was digging in my nose and I went to shake your hand. And that actually happened to me before. Not me, I wasn't the one digging in my nose, someone else was, but that was a first impression that I had of, a, of an individual. Uh, the buying decision starts with the sales approach, therefore uh, it is a most intimidating point of the sales process, right? Uh, so uh, the, the approach can be very intimidating because maybe you don't know the person, maybe uh, you know there's, there's limited contact, and so it, it can be very, very intimidating. The six C's of the sales approach. So you must have confidence, of course. You must be credible, you must have credibility. Uh, contact, you must make contact with the individual. Communication, communication is key. Without communication, you won't be, won't be successful. Uh, customization, you want to customize things towards uh, your client and what their preferences are. And collaboration, you want to collaborate and work uh, in an integral unit with your client in order to get them the best product so that you can also get the best price in return. Uh, communication, uh, the video How to Create Vap Rapid Trust uh, features Larry Pinksey, uh, author of Sell the Filling. Uh, he talks about the power of nonverbal communication and mirroring uh, during a sales approach, right? Uh, so if I if I frown and I say I love you, uh, my frown is what you should pay attention to. So just as, you know, that same notion, they're going to be paying attention to your body language, not necessarily what comes out of your mouth if the body language disagrees and says something totally different. Address the part. Uh, appearance is an important part of the first impression. Uh, dress appropriately and professionally. The rule of thumb is dress better than you think your customer would dress. And uh, keep in mind your customers uh, and his uh, or, her, or her company culture. Right. So you got to dress the part. Uh, I know I wear a tie to work uh, five days a week. Uh, uh, one, one of the things that came up at a different company that I used to work for was that what if some a client comes to the office on Friday and we have casual Friday and I'm in t-shirt and, and jeans right uh, so once I you know kind of kind of mold that over in my mind and decide okay I'm just gonna come in uh, all five five days of the week what if I have an interview on Friday right uh, during every sales approach standards uh, that apply to every selling decision are get the customer's name right right if you mispronounce my name you're gonna you know piss somebody off uh, pretty quickly uh, listen to the customer if you keep talking over the customer you don't listen to them you're gonna lose a sale and be ready uh, with your elevator pitch right so always take your elevator pitch memorize it learn it understand it control it know what types of questions will be asked of it and then you're ready to go uh, name Game Podcast. So this podcast features uh, Peter Post uh, from the Emily Post Insti Institute. Uh, he talks about how to handle non-gender specific names, right? Like how do you uh, figure out uh, what, what the name actually is and are they a male or are they a female? Um, like Aaron. 
could be Aaron, A-A-R-O-N. This guy could be E-R-I-N, which could be a lady. Uh, to listen to the podcast, you click uh, there. You can't click here on the on the PowerPoint, but uh, within your book, you'll be able to check that out. Uh-oh. All right, the listening power. Uh, the video listening power features Brian Tracy. Uh, he explains uh, why the person who asks questions has more control because you can steer uh, somebody in the right direction if you're asking the questions. And sometimes people don't look at it that way. Uh, the 70 30 rule of listening. Uh, the podcast features Shane Gibson. Uh, he explains how practices uh, the 70 30 rule of listening, uh, which we'll get into a little bit further uh, in this chapter. Uh, a listening 2.0 podcast, right? Listening, you can never listen too much. Uh, the podcast features Shane Gibson. Gibson. Uh, he discusses effective ways to listen before you speak online, right? So a lot of times somebody's saying something to us. If we're thinking in our mind what to say next, we're not paying full attention. Uh, elevator pitch, as we discussed before, the video elevator pitch, uh, Green Weddings, uh, features a business owner uh, giving her elevator pitch uh, for her idea about green weddings on a business television show, right? So uh, always have your elevator pitch ready. Approach me by telephone. So, uh, you know, telemarketing is a very, very tough job. Done it before. Uh, mention your name and the purpose of your call in the first 20 seconds, right? Uh, prepare a script for your opening statement. Do ask, uh, is this a good time? Uh, don't start off by asking, how are you today? All right? Some of us may think, well, why wouldn't you say that? But don't. Uh, don't launch into uh, prolonged explanations and uh, leave a voicemail message, right? So you can say, oh, I called him, I called him, but you need to leave a voicemail message. Uh, perfect telephone approach, uh, the video sales call, what do uh, number one demonstrates uh, uh, how to make sales call that results in an appointment, right? So how do we schedule these appointments? And uh, uh, one, one company I used to work for, uh, they, they outsourced that. They said, okay, we want you guys to set up these appointments and then I want you to send these to the Irvine and the Orange office. The voicemail message is very, very important. You don't have a rambling, long voicemail message on there. Uh, the video, How to Leave a Voicemail, uh, that works, discusses the elements of an effective voicemail message. All right, so be sure to watch that. Approach it by email. Uh, they don't have a lot of classes on that now, but you, know, you should be able to use common sense or ask one of the... Uh, you know, ask somebody that, that can assist you with that. So approaching by email, uh, write a number of emails in different styles and tones. Uh, send a well-written email. Uh, follow up persistently, not 10 times a day. Uh, don't send emails that look like templates, right? So when you send a template, you know that, you know that or the other person knows that you didn't spend any time on this. You just said, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to throw this and add this, do the plug and play in the template. But if it's very, very personalized, it gives them a different look, a different feel. Uh, approaching through online social networks, uh, make a comment when you add a prospect as a friend or a new friend, uh, aim for quality over quantity, contribute to the community, don't use sloppy language, and don't make a sales pitch. <clears throat> How to make your approach on social network, so the video business TV, use LinkedIn to sell at internet speed, uh, demonstrates how to make an effective sales approach, right? Uh, so... Make sure that you, you check that out. Social network, social media is, is very, very huge these days. Uh, don't think it's going anywhere. <clears throat> Approaching your contact in person. So uh, it was business to business or business to consumer, uh, the, the way you do it may be a little bit different. Uh, so in business to business, you want to use a strong attention grab and opener. Uh, take your lead from the prospect or customer. Don't use opening times uh, that uh, send the wrong opening lines. I'm sorry. That send the wrong message. Uh, use a sincere and personal approach. Uh, business to consumer, uh, talk to your customer, treat your customer like a guest. Don't ask, can I help you? Uh, don't put any pressure on your customer. Don't prepare a, uh, or prejudge, I'm sorry, a customer. Type the sales approach. So you have your question approach, you can ask a lot of questions. Your product approach, I mean, your product expert, uh, subject matter expert. Uh, referral approach, uh, <clears throat> what type of referrals are you getting or giving? Uh, customer benefit approach, uh, what type of benefits is the customer receiving? Survey approach, uh, we're just going strictly by the survey. Agenda approach, premium approach, and combination approach. So overcoming your reluctance. A uh, few empowering and practical things uh, to help build confidence going into sales approach. So don't use an apologetic language. You read the rest. Uh, practice with some uh, role plays. Uh, don't procrastinate. 
make difficult calls when you have the uh, most energy, right? When you pumped up, have the most energy, make that dis difficult call that you keep skipping. And before going into the call, visualize a successful outcome. <clears throat> so getting past the gatekeepers, the gatekeepers are typically like that admin uh, up in the front answering the phone, like, you know, it. no, he's, he's busy. Uh, so you want to get past those gatekeepers. So gatekeepers are an integral part of the selling relationship. Uh, they have valuable knowledge about the inner, internal workings of its organization. Uh, they are familiar uh, with their boss's schedule. They have a significantly or significant say in allowing outsiders to see their boss. Uh, they can determine how outsiders are represented to their boss. Uh, they often uh, <clears throat> influence the first impression. Right. Uh, and like I said, you know, take take all of these things for the textbook and what it says, but uh, they can't all necessarily uh, hold true. Uh, so you have to work on, you know, one or two uh, at a time. Uh, more on getting past the gatekeepers. Uh, so how to deal with them. Think of the for think for things from the gatekeepers perspective. Give them uh, the information they ask for and when they want it. Show that your call would be worth uh, his boss's time. Uh, learn the gatekeeper's name and be friendly, right? You got to keep them on your side. Uh, if you treat gatekeepers well, they might give you all the information you want. And for extra helpful uh, gatekeepers, you can uh, send a notice or a uh, note or small uh, thank you uh, gift to them. <clears throat> so selling you, uh, what's your elevator pitch, pitch for your brand, right? So remember I said, uh, you know, you're going to have to, this is something that you're going to have to know. Uh, your elevator, did I skip one? Nope. Your elevator pitch is crucial because it tells a prospective employer or someone in your network uh, what you have to offer, what makes you different, and what you want to do, right? So <clears throat> as long as you can answer those uh, four questions or those three questions, uh, we'll be good to go on that one. Uh, your personal elevator pitch, uh, the video deliver on effective elevator pitch demonstrates some tricks to prepare and deliver a brief pitch about yourself. <clears throat> but you should have your own elevator pitch already ready and ready to go. And then our uh, <clears throat> our backup will come after that. Uh, how to create your elevator pitch. So this is what I was talking about in the Harvard Business Review. Uh, keep the following points in mind. Who are you? What experience and skills do you have? What makes you unique? What problem can you help? Uh, what problem can you help your prospective employer solve? Right. So remember, I said that, that question. What can they help you solve? <clears throat> what are you looking for? Another great question to ask. Oh, wrong button. Oh no. <clears throat> All right, so, skipped a few slides, obviously. Uh, elevator pitch uh, critiques uh, the video career success. Elevator pitching part two demonstrates how uh, various elevator pitches are evaluated by a pan uh, by a panel. Uh, discusses what people expect to hear in an elevator pitch. <clears throat> Where to use your elevator pitch when you're networking in an interview. Great time, more than more than welcome to use it anywhere else. But that's the that's the most uh, you know most popular. Uh, uh, be yourself. Uh, since your elevator pitch is a reflection of you, write it down. Write it down. Be sure of what you're saying. Uh, practice it in front of a mirror until you're comfortable with it. Deliver it with ease and uh, with natural tone and pacing. Use your elevator pitch frequently uh, to get balance between preparation and spontaneity. And uh, deliver your elevator pitch. Or speech uh, with a smile. So our summary, uh, as I always say, that's your favorite slide uh, of the deck. Uh, establish credibility early on. Uh, communicate to your prospect uh, that you are a professional, well-intentioned, and trustworthy. You want to make sure you get that first 15 seconds, get them moving on your side. Uh, listen to your customer and ask for permission before uh, continuing with your approach. And uh, use your elevator pitch in networking and informal uh, informational or job interviews, right? So you remember what an informational interview is. I want to learn this position. I want to eventually be in this position. Let me let me shadow you and see what it does. Uh, use elevator pitch networking and an informational or job interview. So you want to memorize it because you may have that job interview. Uh, in networking, 
things may come up as well. Uh, <clears throat> those are those are great things to use. So as always, you know, the summary is great. Be sure to to look at those few key, key points and then, uh, you know, do the rest of your assignments uh, for the week. Uh, so that's it. In a nutshell, 33, five, uh, all done. Uh, we will now go on to chapter chapter 10. Uh, thanks a lot. I uh, hope you guys have a good day and a great week.